It's another episode of Talking Books and Writing and Stuff. I am your congenial host, all the way from Radisson, Saskatchewan. We're talking today with Angus Adley. And as we say, the uh, Talking Books and Writing and Stuff is a wide topic. And so today we're going to talk about the life and times of Angus Adley, retired school teacher, living now in Saskatoon. But, but, Angus, you started out in the Fielding area, am I right? On a farm south of the town of Fielding. How big was the family? My, I was the fourth of a family. I had three sisters who were all 10, 12, and 14 years older than I was. And one of those sisters was my pretty wife's mother. Moira. Yes. <laughs> right. So when you were growing up, now that was in the mid-30s you were born? I was born in 1934. And so it was kind of a, a strange time to be on the farm. Now, what do you remember? What's your first memory of being life on the farm? Well, my first memory of life occurred one day when I was about five years old. And I, I, was, I went to school. I wasn't going to school yet, but I'd had a birthday in April. And somehow or another, they took me to school. And I went there for April, May, and June. <laughs> and and I, I, I really felt strange because I was really an only child in a sense. Because my youngest sister was 10 years older than I was. And Moira was 12 years older than I was. Jean, I never knew until she came back from BC because she left when I was very young. <laughs> I was probably, uh, oh, maybe three or four. I, I can't answer that for sure. Okay. So you went to school uh, at age five and then you kind of never left because you became a teacher later in life. So you've been, yeah, you were in school all your life. I spent my whole life trying to learn something. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have chores on the farm? Well, not in the early days. I, it was a, the first thing I remember was gathering eggs and uh, things like that. And I was very young then. And uh, my, my parents were very old. As a matter of fact, most of the kids in school when I went had grandparents that were about the same age as my my father. My mother was only a little younger than that. Dad was 52 when I was born, and my mother was eight years younger than he was. Now, I'm assuming that those numbers might be one out because of birth time. Right. And... and uh, my sisters were 10, 12, and 14 years older than I was. And so uh, Jean had left, gone out to work in BC when I was about oh, three or four, I guess. I'm not sure of that. And uh, I remember uh, Moira was going with a fellow from Fielding. Hunts was his name. And... Uh, he was really a handsome man, I thought, and he was good to me. He really, I think he must have liked me because he, he sure, I liked him. Right. So that's usually a reciprocal kind of thing. Right. <laughs> and and uh, uh, I know that he took me to the exhibition in Saskatoon with, with Moira. This was before they were married. My sister Norma was with us, and there was somebody else, but I don't remember who possibly one of his sisters. And I remember that night, I was only about seven or eight years old, and we went to the grandstand. It was a Saturday night, and there was a big fire. The barns were right across from the track. Right. And they caught fire near the north end, and they just spread down the whole barn section. And I was scared. I was scared silly. And they got to the end, and there was a fence there, and it started burning around the end of the track. <laughs> and I thought, it's coming here. Well, somebody, they had a cat or something, and they knocked the fence down and stopped it. But I never felt good at the exhibition after that. We did go on a couple of rides. I enjoyed that. And uh, that was that was the story of that. Uh, there wasn't... Uh, 
I don't remember anything except the rides and the fire. <laughs> Did you go by train? No, they had a car. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so this is in your early days. Who cut your hair when you were young? <laughs> I don't remember having a haircut until... Uh, it's not funny. I guess my family did somehow. I, I really don't know. I do remember going into the pool room. The barber was in there, and uh, Alec Garnett was his name. And he he started cutting my hair when I was a little older, probably 10 or so. I, 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 I'm not sure of that. Never thought about it. Well, I never had a barber cut my hair till after I was 18 because my dad trained as a barber after he got out of the Air Force. So we got all our haircuts at home. And like I said, I'd never been to a barber until later on after I finished high school. Well, you're talking about haircuts. My wife, We had four boys, my wife and I, when we were married. And that'll come up later, but... She started cutting their hair because there was nobody in Loon Lake that cut hair. And she got so good at it that neighbors were wanting her to cut their hair. And one day she said, I'll cut your hair. I used to have to drive to Meadow Lake. And uh, uh, that was a lot of work. And she did a good job. So she cut my hair for years. And then we moved to Saskatoon. And she was still cutting my hair. And one day she said, I think I'm going to quit. (laughs) <laughs> I had to go out and pay people to do it after that. Well, um, you and I are both the same. I don't think we need a haircut anymore. <laughs> well, I don't have much hair. I don't I don't know how much you have. But Nothing. Less than that. Well, less than I am. Yeah. Eh? I'm yeah. like Graham. <laughs> <laughs> um, back to fielding. How far was the farm from town? Well, a half a mile from school. Uh, we were the f- second quarter section of land south of fielding. And how big was the farm? Was it just a quarter Quarter section? Quarter section. My dad farmed it all with horses. My granddad did the same. (laughs) My dad, there you are, grandpa, dad. Uh, uh, My dad never owned a motor. He never owned anything that was electric. The the biggest machine he had, well, he had machinery, obviously. But the fanciest one he had was his pocket watch. (laughs) So, obviously, you had outhouses. (laughs) We did. Yeah, in the cold. <laughs> yes, I'm familiar with that as well. Yeah. Um, electricity didn't come to that area till the 50s, did it? Well, I was, I was, uh, I was still going to school when it came. Uh, I would have said, well, 50 would be close. Because I think I remember coal oil lamps at the farm still into the 50s in Denholm. Oh, yeah. I think 57 they had electricity, but I'm not sure. That's how things go. So we farmed quarter section. That supported the whole family. Yeah. And nowadays you need 10,000 acres to support one person. So it's crazy. Wow. Did you know a guy named Dan Murphy out there? Radisson? In uh, Fielding? Dan Murphy? Yeah. No, I don't remember that name. There were Murphys lived in Radisson. Yeah. Well, uh, he was related to them. So Okay. I, know that I, I remember that they had a couple of daughters. That I thought were pretty good looking, but we were all scared of Dan Murphy or the their fathers, so I never got to know them. <laughs> well, Dan never married, but uh, he talks about the fire and fielding at the hotel. That was probably before you came around. But... Well, uh, yes, it was in the 30s. There were actually two huge fires in fielding. Uh, they were only about two or three years apart. The first one destroyed a garage and a grocery store and several, a fire, um, oh, uh, uh, where they keep horses at night, yep. uh, the livery stable, stable. Yep. and, and uh, a couple of houses. And uh, they, I don't know whether they had insurance or not, but they started rebuilding and uh, they were doing pretty well, I guess, and by golly, there was a second fire. Oh, right. And it burnt out everything that had been rebuilt and a bunch more with it. And at that time, that finished fielding as far as growth. And before that, there used to be articles in the Star Phoenix or some paper talking about fielding being the only town that would ever amount to anything between Saskatoon and North Battleford. That's what I heard. It was a going concern until oh, yeah. then. 
So yeah. Now your dad, like you said, that was David. David, yeah. Now he was in the First World War. Did he ever talk about that? Well, he was in it, and he didn't talk much about it. Uh, he he joined up in in Saskatoon in 1916 and went overseas. Uh, his first battle was Vimy Ridge. I heard that. So and and uh, what an introduction. That's right. <laughs> and he 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 had a strange. Uh, my father had never gone to school, not even for a day. Oh. And he the only thing he could write was he signed his name. And uh, he, uh, he 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 uh, never seemed to suffer from lack of education. He seemed he was a wise guy, and he mother always read the paper to him. <laughs> they got two weekly papers, and uh, they always listened to the news and things like that on the radio. I guess I don't even remember us having a radio at that time, but I guess we did. <laughs> and and. Um, uh, what was your question? That was it about talking about the war. Oh yeah, he he uh, he he was a private, and uh, he got the job of having to move ammunition from behind the lines to the front lines, oh. and he used a donkey or a horse, and so the opposition, the Germans were shooting at his horse more than they were at him. Right. Because if they keep the horse back, uh, then they were, they had less ammunition to use. But he never was wounded. But he came home and he brought his helmet with him. And on the top of the helmet, there was a bullet crease Whoa. about two inches long. And he said, well, it isn't as bad as you think because he said when I was running to get out of the way, I couldn't run with my helmet on, and I'd take it off, and I'd be running, and it got shot out of my hand. <laughs> That's a good one. And then apparently you met your mother in Scotland? Yeah. he After, used, Like a home on leave, or they shipped that, him over to... That's right. He was on leave, and uh, he would go to the hospital to visit some of his buddies, and uh, mother worked there, oh. and uh, they uh, they got acquainted and um, when the war ended, well, I suppose that sometime during that, they decided they were going to get married, and uh, the war ended in November, and uh, he was through over there, and they got married in January of 1919. And their honeymoon was from wherever they took off from, Southampton maybe, and they came to to Saskatchewan. They came over on the boat, and that was their honeymoon. <coughs> Dad spent the whole trip under under the deck, seasick, and mother was upstairs dancing with the soldiers. <laughs> uh, Where was your dad born then? He was born in Lucknow, well, uh, Lucknow, Ontario, Bruce County, and he lived around there until he came to Fielding. About well, he didn't come straight to Fielding. He actually owned land. He he bought. He took a oh god! Now my memory's failing me. What do you call the, the farms they used to get? Uh, oh, uh, homestead. 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 He had a homestead up by Coshin, and uh, as a matter of fact, Graham one day told me that land description for our farm and I said well it's a land description but it's not our farm and I said where is it and uh, he told me and I figured it out I said that was his homestead but he it was a rock pile <laughs> and he he gave up on that pretty quick <laughs> pretty quick <laughs> and uh, he was working for farmers and somehow ended up in fielding there were a lot of people came to fielding from the same area in Ontario as my dad did. Uh, the Millers were the ones that were the most prosperous. Uh, Sam Miller had a, we used to call it his farm Millerville because they had more buildings on it than the town did. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, as I say, there were a lot from Lucknow and around there that came to, uh, to uh, Fielding. 
Now, when you're growing up there in the fielding area, did you read a lot of books? Did you read much? Or? Well, as many as I could find. <coughs> I was reading books all my life uh, until just recently. And uh, I, uh, I can remember I was probably 11 or 12, and I'd come home from school, and if I had any homework, I might do it. <laughs> and uh, if I didn't, I would be reading a book. And I'd be sitting at the dining room window because the west, the sun set there, and this is winter time. And my mother would say, Angus, would you set the table? Supper's ready. And I'd say yes and keep on reading. I, I never heard her, really. <laughs> and she'd come in and she'd say, well, you haven't set the table. So I'd put the book down. And by then it was dark. I was sitting by the window so I could see a little bit. And uh, I, I read as many books as I could find, but we didn't have a library in the school. And there was a portable library, and they, what it was was two ammunition boxes. Do you ever see them, those metal boxes? Yep. And they usually came, we'd get them for two months. Oh. Well, in that box, there'd be about well, a dozen books that'd be at my age group. And uh, I would read them all. And, and I, 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 I read well, so I would read older ones too, it just, just to have something to do. Now, do you have any favorite authors or books that you would recall from that time? Well, no. Many of the stories I read were military stories. I remember what the name of one was Wings Over the Rockies, but I haven't a clue what it was about, except... It, it, it was a wartime, it was air, yeah. aircraft, uh, and I've often wondered what it was about, but I don't know. I read Black Beauty and oh, yes. all the traditions, Lassie Come Home, and uh, well, there were lots of them, but I, I, I haven't thought much about them. Now, do you think life was better or easier then? For you than it was for your parents, or was it about the same? Now, are you saying for me then as it would have been for their parents when they were my age? Or yeah. Well, I think it was probably easier for me because Dad had built a house in the twenties. It it was uh, I forget the name of the company. They were those houses. They were pre-cut. Oh, and like from an Eaton's catalog. It was or like something. the Eaton's one. There was an Eaton's one and there was another one and he bought it and he built it in about 19, well, I'd say 27, 28, something like that. In fact, he had come to mother, they had started farming on the farm and fielding in 19, I think it was 20. I might be a year out there. And... Uh, after about five years, he came to her and said, well, I've saved enough money. You can take a trip back to Scotland or we can build a house. And she said to him, when are you starting to build? <laughs> so I guess and that answered that question. That answered that question. And, and when I was about 10, Dad was tearing down what they had lived in when they first were married and where the girls lived when they were born. And he tore it down, and we, I, was, I had the job of pulling all the nails out. They were rusty and bent, and uh, I don't know how good I was at it, but I did the best I could. And then we moved the lumber up behind the granaries, and he built a hen house with it. And, and the hen house was warmer, he said, than the house I'd ever been. <laughs> uh, it, 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 it was just old lumber. No insulation, nothing. <laughs> so the girls had had a rough time when they were little kids. Now, did you have chores, I guess, around the farm that you had to do? Not that much. I was to get the wood in, and I was to uh, take out, uh, get the water from the well, uh, you know, a pail at a time, and uh, empty empty the pails if, if they got filled up. Uh, there wasn't much of that though. You you didn't you didn't get much, what we call the slop pail because you were careful. You didn't pour things in there; just pour them in there. 
because you had to haul them in too to get to new water. Now, did you have cows or? Yeah, well, yeah, we had about that that milk cows. Uh, we had them when I remembered, and we had them until I was about twelve or thirteen. Uh, I did learn to milk the cows. I, I milked them. Uh, I never milked five of them, but mother milked cows too, and and dad did. Dad could milk a pail full of milk so fast I couldn't believe it. Uh, made me feel ashamed. Yeah, my uncle's the same way. He could just <laughs> fill it up, and I'd barely get started. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> and the exactly. foam was coming up over top of the yeah. bucket. So well, the fast. cows got used to whoever milked them too. Yeah, yeah, and they kind of figured it out. And they shipped cream. Yeah, to and, the co-op creamery. And then you get a cream check. That's right. And the cream checks, every once in a while, it would say the cattle had got into the stinkweed. Oh. And yeah. Dad maintained that there was no stinkweed on our farm. And uh, if he did, I believe him. But uh, but every once in a while it would happen. So we don't. if there was stinkweed on our farm, they should have found it all the time. Yeah. But But they didn't. Yeah, we got it mixed up with somebody else. Uh, probably. Do you remember what uh, first time you voted? First time I voted. Yeah. Oh yeah. And for whom or <laughs> which party? Oh, for the right guy. <laughs> the right. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, the year before the election, I was eighteen. I was seventeen because I just turned eighteen in April, and the election was in June. And the ND, the CCF had been in power for, well, from 44 to 52. That was eight years. So uh, uh, there was a group of young people. I remember Crawford Baker and Woodsworth Baker. Their dad was a real socialist. Uh, I didn't know their dad very much, but I knew, uh, I knew, I knew Woodsy a little. And uh, they were organizing a, a CCYM group, which was a CCF youth movement in fielding, to get some was activity. And uh, there were about eight or ten kids went to it, and they invited me to come. And they weren't sure about my parents, whether they would vote for the NDP or not, CCF. CCF at the time, yeah. Uh, or not. And uh, I honestly didn't know, but they invited me to come, so I went. And they were organizing it, and they they were electing officers, and they elected me president. <laughs> and <laughs> and <coughs> I found it afterwards. Uh, they said they did that because they weren't sure of who I'd vote for, but they figured if I was president that I'd have to vote for the CCF. <laughs> Do you remember what kind of issues were the issues of the day at that time? Well, I honestly don't remember the issues particularly. Uh, farmers were beginning to get a little bit of money, mm -hmm. and they hadn't had any. And Saskatchewan was beginning to get a little bit of money, and they hadn't had any. So that probably was, uh, you know, the first signs of maybe a bit of prosperity. Now, you mentioned Baker. There's Baker Road out in the fielding area. Yeah, that directed you to the Bakers. They well, were up that way about, oh, three miles, four miles. Well, they're still around because I know a kid named Riley Baker, who's a, a Baker descendant who lives on the farm. Yeah, his father is Woodsworth. It's probably his grandfather. No, Woodsy's my age. Oh, it could be a grandfather. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, because yeah. those names, Crawford and Woodward, are like original Radisson Co-op members from yep. way back when. That's right. I still remember that from working at the Co-op. And their, their, their father's name was Charlie Baker. Uh -huh. Six Ford that he had bought that spring. And... Uh, I got sick one day at school. My mother had made my lunch, and she had put some <laughs> uh, celery in my lunch with cheese in it. I'd never seen that in my life before, but I was hungry. I ate it, 
in the afternoon I got sick and I said, went home from school after school. I said, you know, that cheese in the, in the celery wasn't good for me because I've got a terrible stomach ache. And in the morning, I still had it. They phoned the doctor, he came and he said, Angus needs his appendix out, he's got to go to the hospital. Oh. And dad said to him, well, could it wait another year? And, <laughs> no. and he said, no, he has to go today, right now. So dad, I guess he must have phoned Baker's and they said that they would take me in and Charlie was there and Crawford went to drive and they were in the front and dad and I were in the back and I started feeling better. And uh, we got to the hospital and the doctor said, we've got to operate right now. And uh, I think his name was Peterson. And I remember my sister Moira said something to dad, well, you're not letting him do it, are you? And dad said, well, I think they're doing it now. And she said, well, we had a friend who had his appendix out and he died. Which was not a very nice thing to say. To As you're going into the operation. You know, I never heard it, thank God. But anyway, it turned out that Peterson had a son that was a doctor too. And she was talking about the old Peterson, which may or may not, <laughs> may, have, uh, gotcha. may not have made him a good doctor. He <laughs> may or didn't get the patient suited enough. So when you think back again to those days, what did you do for fun other than read and chase chickens? Well, I... Uh, Actually, I had a rooster that used to chase me when I was younger, uh, and uh, that was no fun. But no, we had softball, and we played ball. We didn't play against other towns except at our sports day, and and also, uh, I think we played softball in the track meet that the school put on, and, and the, the school the school units had been set up in right after the CCF were elected. And that's, I remember that quite clearly. And uh, in the wintertime, we played hockey. And we didn't have much of a team. Uh, the, the, there's a picture in the Fielding, his, Fielding Maymont, and I think it's Riddell and somewhere else, a history book. And there was a picture of the Fielding Falcons. And uh, this was after their heyday. And I, I was telling Bob one day, that's Diane's brother, that I should look at, try to get the book and get you to find it because it was a picture of his dad on the team. Oh. And he was quite a tall man. It was, well, at least he was tall by my standards. <laughs> and uh, I was the shortest kid in school till I was in grade seven or eight. Oh, right, and then boom. And then boom. I would grow a home at night and my mother wasn't sure it was me. <laughs> You'd grow overnight. That's right. And that was part one of our interview with Angus Adley. Keep listening. Part two will come up in a future episode. Thank you. Thank you for visiting with us today. This is Talking Books and Stuff with Dennis Rimmer. Contact him at dennis at talkingbooks.tk. Thank you, and may all the good news be yours. Oh, and don't forget to check out his book, The Great Canadian Notebook, available across Canada and at amazon.ca. Oh, oh, oh.